Welcome to the CIO Update. I'm joined today by Jonathan Armitage. Welcome, Jonathan. Thank you very much. So we continue to see US markets hit record high. Volatility continues to be pretty low. Mm -hmm. This seems to have yielded some pretty attractive returns for investors. It certainly has, and I think that's because you've seen continued relatively robust earnings growth um, out of the US. And I think investors are also responding to some of the tax changes that have uh, recently passed through Congress and the anticipation that that is going to be good for corporate earnings um, in the US. Well, the US market economically continues to be quite strong. And as you mentioned, the US um, tax plan has been has gotten congressional approval. You know, do you think most of that is already priced into markets? I think that's one of the challenges that uh, investors, certainly in that sort of part of the market, are going to have to uh, work through in the coming months. Yeah, it's obviously quite clear that for certain companies that will be hugely beneficial as tax rates, uh, certainly for the higher uh, tax paying companies, uh, come down quite dramatically. The issue, I think, is going to be how those uh, benefits are shared between uh, shareholders, uh, employees and customers. And we've had some indication already that from companies like JP Morgan that uh, the CEO of JP Morgan said that he would sort of see the benefits of those tax cuts being shared proportionately between shareholders, uh, customers and also employees. Okay, and how do you think that leads the US Fed to react over the 2018. One of the things that uh, I think markets are going to have already started focusing on, and I think will continue to do so in the coming months, is how these tax cuts are going to be funded. And this is coming at a time when you are seeing full employment in the US, and you're starting to see uh, wage inflation pick up in certain parts of the economy. Skilled labour is becoming uh, more expensive, and that is starting to. Uh, see shifts in the way that particularly bond investors think about future inflation risks. Now, so turning our attention to Australia, the economic data here is a bit more mixed. What's your kind of outlook for Australia over 2018? I think we'd expect to see more of, uh, more of the same, actually. Um, it's clear that there are some parts of the economy, particularly services, which continue to perform relatively well. You've seen quite a strong rebound in commodity prices, which helps the resources sector. The challenge here in Australia is in areas like uh, retail and the fact that uh, productivity gains uh, across the Australian economy have been relatively weak. And so there are some pluses and minuses within that. Uh, we continue to see that there will be economic growth, uh, but th we expect that to sort of translate into relatively muted earnings growth here in Australia relative to other parts of the world. Okay, one aspect that's been quite topical of late is super funds in Australia uh, seeming to under-report some of their growth asset exposure. Um, do you have a view on this? I think that this is actually quite a sort of complex issue. Uh, and there are no sort of clear guidelines around the way that uh, different superannuation funds will look at growth assets uh, as opposed to defensive assets. Our own view has been a relatively conservative one. We're very clear around uh, what we see as uh, defensive assets and what we see as sort of growth assets. And we're very clear that when we talk about those allocations within our various investment options, that we are absolutely able to stand behind the definitions uh, behind those different uh, components in everyone's uh, investment option. Um, given that markets are quite buoyant, um, let's talk about risk for a second. What are the key risks that you are concerned about in looking forward through 2018? I think one of the clear ones, and, and you've sort of mentioned this a couple of times, is that markets have performed particularly well uh, in the last sort of 12 months or so. And one of the sort of potential risks is actually that, that equity markets uh, in particular have got slightly ahead of themselves and that the earnings growth from companies doesn't match the expectations that uh, investors currently have. Uh, there are obviously and continue to be some geopolitical risks. Those have been um, well rehearsed and well discussed. Uh, we have some upcoming elections in, in Europe. We have an Italian uh, election in, uh, in March. Um, it is very possible that that ends up in some form of stalemate in a country which is still a very important component of economic growth in, uh, in Europe. And those are things that aren't getting an awful lot of attention uh, currently, but they will do as we sort of progress through the year. Great. Well, thank you very much for your time. Not at all. And thank you for joining us today.